The V Collection from Arturia has a wonderful selection of analogue and digital synths, vintage keys, acoustic pianos and hybrid instruments. And it just got much bigger with the new V Collection 10. Or is it V Collection X? No one's really told me. X. Sounds more powerful right hi folks i'm mike and i hope you're well i have covered the last two versions of the v collection from arturia so if you want to find out a little bit more about what was already in it i recommend you follow this playlist right here because in this video i'm going to be covering what's new and that includes six new instruments and two completely rebuilt instruments but i want to make clear up front that arturia did send this to me to take a look at but i wasn't required to make a video at all i'm not being paid for this video they haven't looked at it they haven't told me what to say nothing like that whatsoever i just wanted to cover it because i do like this collection but this video is being sponsored by DistroKid. If you want to get your music out to the world and get 7% off today, follow the VIP link in the description down below and you'll get that discount right away. So let's dive in and take a look at a really interesting electric piano. <laughs> The CP70 was an electric piano released by Yamaha in 1976. Not to be confused with a digital piano, these things actually have strings and pickups as the advanced mode of the Arturia CP70V reveals. Used by artists such as Billy Joel, Keith Emerson and Alicia Keys, this sound offers something a little bit different from say a Fender Rhodes and to my mind naturally sounds a little bit brighter and perhaps more aggressive? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm a proud owner of an Arturia Mini Freak synthesizer and although I've come to absolutely love this hardware I have to say it's super convenient to have this software version the Mini Freak V and one of the things I love about it is the pad sounds have a listen to this one Isn't that just lush? Now this is a kind of a simplified version of the features that you get on this keyboard. To get to all of the features, you need to go to the advanced mode, which you can see here. So apart from the two main oscillators and the filters and effects at the top, we've also got you know your LFOs and some envelopes and things going on there. Let's have a listen to a more, well, I'm gonna call it a more granular sound. This is called Geiger. Hmm, really kind of like that. Now also this has some great sort of arpeggiator and sequencer features. We can go to the sequencer tab over here and see them. I want to have a listen to a preset called Celeste. Now this is actually using an arpeggiator. Let's have a listen to this. <laughs> Talking about sort of sequenced and arpeggiator sounds, see what you think of this next plugin. In 1981, Roland released the TB303 bass synthesizer, but they discontinued it in 1984 as it was actually a commercial failure. But, as has often been the case, it was later rediscovered and loved, particularly in the acid scene. Now, the Acid V from Arturia is inspired by that original hardware, but I feel they've kind of enhanced it, at least in functionality. Before we get into that, let's just have a quick listen to one of my favorite presets here. It's called Carbon Based. <laughs> Oh, 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 
Now that was all created just by holding one note on my keyboard because we were using the sequencer function of this, which I think is the sort of the essence of what this does. You may have noticed also that I was pushing this drive knob around a little bit. Now what happened was is people were overdriving this, particularly in the acid scene, which gave it that grittier sound. This wasn't actually a feature of the original hardware, but Arturia have added it here. They've also added a sub oscillator, which you can see over here, which makes the sound a little bit kind of fatter. Now you can play with the sound in many different ways with all of these controls that we can see up here. And just in case you miss it, if you get this plugin, click on this little knob here. It reveals some secret controls, which you can further use to enhance the sound. Now, another thing we can do is go over to the advanced panel here. This reveals the sequencer and arpeggiator. Talking about the arpeggiator, let's have a listen to one of the presets, which uses that, it's called Leap of the Angel. <laughs> should note as well, of course, you can see that we have modulation features here and some effects as well. Let's have a listen to another sound. Now with this one, I've set it up so it's neither using the sequencer or the arpeggiator, but instead I'm playing just single notes on the keyboard. Have a listen. I just want to quickly remind you, if you're looking for traditional piano sounds, they are included in the V collection in the form of Piano V. Here you'll find things like this grand piano, but also a selection of upright pianos, etc. It's really, really versatile and they sound absolutely great. However, if you want something a little bit different, you may want to take a look at the first of the plugins added from the Augmented series to the new V collection and this one is called Augmented Grand Piano. Now if you're not familiar with the Augmented series essentially it's about taking traditional acoustic instruments and blending them with synthesis largely by using these controls in here. These are macros and the big one in the middle is the main one. That's the morph control. And it's more than just a sort of a mixer between the two different uh, layers of sound. It actually morphs the settings from one instrument to another, if that makes sense. Before we dive into it a little bit more, let's just have a quick listen to this so you get a sense of what it's really all about. Now, as with all instruments in the Augmented series, a lot of these controls on the front page here are actually macros that do blend those settings from one instrument to another. You can go to the advanced panel here and then look at macros and you can see them there and you can make adjustments there. Also here we can see the two main layers, layer A, layer B. Obviously you can create your own layers from different types of sounds. We've got some modulation in there. We've got an arpeggiator and also some effects as well. So this is really all about something a little bit different and I find that it sort of inspires you to create new music. Let's have a look at some of the other plugins added from the Augmented series, but first First, it currently only costs $22.99 per year to upload an unlimited number of original tracks to DistroKid and have them distributed to all of the major platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Google, etc. And the great news is if you follow that VIP link in the description down below, you're going to get a further 7% off, making it only... Cheaper, cheaper than $22.99.
Another great example of a plugin added from the Augmented series into the new V collection is Augmented Woodwinds. Have a listen to this. As you can hear, it's got the sound of a sort of traditional woodwind section with a little something added to it. That can't be said of this one called Impending Doom. Love that. But if you do want something a little bit more traditional, have a listen to Baked Clarinet. And finally, they've also added augmented brass. Now, the V collection already included augmented strings and augmented voices. So I do believe that you now have the full complement of the augmented series included in the V collection. Let's have a listen to this preset, Lost in Time. I also rather like this one. This is called Brass Dreamland. want to mention that a couple of the instruments are not exactly new but they have been completely rebuilt those are the whirly v and the mini v let's just have a listen to them one after the other starting off with the whirly v There's actually 39 instruments included in the V collection. If you want to find out about all of the others, I do recommend you watch my playlist about them right here. Or you could just buy it right away and then watch videos about it afterwards. Do you do that? It's a bit strange, isn't it? Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> 